To tonight's original now with in-depth reporting on a topic we've been keeping an eye on nearly a year after the chaotic and deadly withdrawal from Afghanistan. The commander of all U.S. troops in the region at the time is sharing more about his reflections on that moment in an NBC News exclusive. General Frank McKenzie was charged with leading the withdrawal mission, telling us it was doomed from the start, he says. Thirteen Americans were killed in the botched plans to leave Bagram Air Base, and so many more people were hurt. Here's our Pentagon correspondent, Courtney Kuby. It was about a year ago, the end of the U.S. presence in Afghanistan. On August 14, 2021, the U.S. began a non-combatant evacuation operation as Taliban fighters surrounded the capital, Kabul. The next two weeks proved chaotic and deadly. I felt very strongly that we had the ability to keep a platform in Afghanistan at about 2,500. Critics said any U.S. presence would put the U.S. back at war with the Taliban and require thousands more troops to deploy. But General Frank McKenzie, who commanded all the troops in the region at the time, says the withdrawal could have turned out differently. I would have preferred to hold Bagram at 2,500, but that's what it would have taken. And that would also assume the Afghans would stand and fight with you. And we thought the Afghans would stand and fight with us at 2,500. President Biden ordered all U.S. troops to leave, a decision the administration defends even today. Uh, as for the argument about uh, uh, troops on the ground, I mean, we've heard from, from other defense leaders as well uh, that had we kept that number uh, or a large number of troops on the ground uh, after May, and of course the president extended that to August, uh, we would have found ourselves at war with the Taliban and American troops would have come under attack again, which means that it would have been very likely that we would have add, had to add to the 2,500 troops uh, that were already there. And that was just unacceptable to the president, that we weren't going to not only add troops, but that uh, we were going to stay at war indefinitely with the Taliban. McKenzie still believes it was doomed from the start. I think uh, we wanted to have it all. We wanted to withdraw and essentially go to zero and yet maintain a diplomatic platform in the country. And that was not feasible. And so that's why we got ourselves into an extremist situation at the very end. One year ago today, McKenzie was at Kabul Airport, the front line of the evacuation. It was a surreal scene. You had human waste all over, all over the deck, uh, partially eaten food, water bottles. The possibility of attack was very, very real. But he believes the chaos was inevitable once the U.S. announced the decision to withdraw. I believe that what happened in August of last year occurred when we decided to leave completely in April of that year. And once you make that basic decision, then events took on a certain trajectory. That's not a military decision. That's a political decision. McKenzie believes the military alone shouldn't take the blame. I think the U.S. failure in Afghanistan was not the failure solely of the U.S. military, although we certainly bear responsibility for that, but a whole-of-government approach that simply failed. The events of last summer still haunt Frank McKenzie. I've thought about it every day. It's something that, uh, that I spent a lot, of time, a lot of time considering, the lost opportunities, you know, what it meant, the loss, the loss of human beings. What were some of the lost opportunities that you still think about now? I think about what we could have done differently, uh, and I, you know, I, I, I owe that to those who did not come home. Not only those who did not come home from what happened in August, but those that preceded them in our 20-year engagement in Afghanistan, because those lives are very valuable too. Courtney is joining us now. Um, Courtney, I'm so glad to have you, and I'm so glad that you shared that conversation with us because I think it's an important one. One of the questions at the time of the withdrawal had been about the intelligence capabilities, and you heard a lot from this administration and, as you know, from the Pentagon about the idea that they still had so-called over-the-horizon capabilities, that it was going to be okay because they still had you know, teams in the region. They were able to react quickly. How, one year later, how is that assessment holding up? So if you ask the administration right now, they say, look, we just took out the head of Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. Right. That That's proves right. exactly we that proves that we still have this capability. But I actually posed that question to General McKenzie, now retired General McKenzie, uh, yesterday asking about that. And he said when he left the job, the U.S. intelligence collection picture had degraded down to about two percent of what it was before the U.S. withdrawal from there. Now, that, actually, that makes sense that there would be a degradation because there's no U.S. military, there's no U.S. diplomats there. But the fact that they lost, in his assessment, 97 or 98 percent of that intelligence collection, it's a fact that he says Halley really concerns him even today.